animal kingdom we are studying the different groups which uh, are called as the divisions or phylum so already we have studied the phylum porifera phylum silentrata and phylum tenophora so in the next uh, phylum phylum platelmenthes ascalmenthes and annelida then we come across phylum mollusca phylum arthropoda phylum echinodermata and so on now coming to the first phylum platelmenthes <coughs> now phylum platelmenthes helminthes means actually worms platy means flat so the worms are flat in other words so in this we come across tapeworm liver fluke uh, and many others now these uh, uh, animals like uh, tapeworm and uh, uh, liver fluke so they are having a flat body which are flattened dorsally and ventrally so dorso ventrally flattened body is the main characteristic of uh, this phylum platelmenthes and we and also planaria is also another example now these animals uh, some of them are free living and some are parasites now when they are parasites uh, these parasites uh, they are having uh, a kind of mechanisms or uh, some uh, structures which uh, cling to the body of the host so they are having some hook like structures or they are having some uh, suckers what are called as for example the liver fluke uh, is having suckers and uh, other uh, tapeworms it is having some what uh, hook like structures and suckers so these will help to cling to the body of the host uh, to the organ inside of that uh, host body so that is uh, the characteristic feature of the platelmenthes then another important uh, this uh, character is they are bilaterally symmetrical so already we have studied what is bilaterally symmetrical so this uh, bilaterally symmetrical and they are triploblastic animals so now this character is common to all these three phylum phyla so bilaterally symmetrical means the body can be divided into two equal halves in a single plane only and uh, triploblastic means the body wall is made up of three layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm so endoparasites and uh, these are ocelomids so ocelomids there is no coelom coelom is absent uh, coelomids pseudocelomids coelomids so ocelomids means no coelom and uh, ocelomids uh, is the characteristic feature of this uh, platelmenthes uh, phylum then another important character of this is uh, the flame cells are important characteristics of this phylum which are never found in any other phylum for example certain characteristics are uh, characteristics are uh, specific or uh, distinguished characters of that phylum only for example we when we have studied uh, Uh, coenocytes or collar cells they are uh, restricted to phylum porifera only and similarly phylum silentrata nidoblasts they are found only in that phylum so we don't come across a such a structure in any other group of the animal kingdom similarly flame cells are uh, one type of cells which help in osmoregulation and also excretion osmoregulation means it is just the function of the kidney they maintain the water balance in the body and also they remove the waste materials so these are present in the uh, body of the platelmenthes now they are called as the flame cells because uh, actually when we study the structure of the cell now inside the cell uh, there is a kind of uh, uh, actually it is protein so that protein is arranged uh, which is actually red in color and that appears like a flame inside the cell so hence they are called as the flame cells so there is uh, the word of flame has been referred because a flame like structure appears inside the cell and it, it is due to the uh, color of that protein which is arranged like the appearance of the flame and that is why they are called as the flame cells 
so the flame cells they help in osmoregulation and uh, they help in uh, excretion and inside of the body there is also a cavity and uh, so that cavity uh, will help in uh, taking in the water and also here the digestion is incomplete that means uh, there is a single opening through which means which functions like the mouth and as well as anus so the uh, but uh, the excretion takes place uh, by the help of this uh, uh, flame cells and again uh, these are hermaphrodites so that means they are having uh, both male and uh, female reproductive organs in the same animal and they are called as bisexual animals or hermaphrodites and that is why the fertilization takes place within the female uh, part and that is internal fertilization is there so these are the characteristics of the phylum platyl mythis so already i had mentioned the examples in this phylum are planaria liver fluke tapeworm uh, and uh, uh, many others like for example uh, dugacia as another example so that is about platyl mythis now coming to the askel mythis so this uh, ask means a sack helminthes means worms so the worms are somewhat sack like uh, hence they are called as askelminthes now in this uh, uh, the coming to the characteristics of this phylum askelminthes now these animals in this we come across the common uh, uh, disease causing animal the round worm now this round worm already we, we have seen uh, now this uh, round worm is a cylindrical body now the body is cylindrical and uh, the body is covered by a thick cuticle so most of these uh, animals are parasites in this group so round worm hook worm pin worm and then filarial worm so many others come under this uh, group almost all they are uh, disease causing worms now this uh, ascalmentes the body is covered by a thick cuticle which is well protected and it is resistant to the enzymes so whenever that uh, animal is living inside the host so they are uh, for example round worm is a parasite of our small intestine and uh, this uh, uh, round worm when it is present in our intestine our body enzymes will not act on the body of the animal that is round worm because it is having a thick cuticle which is resistant to the enzymes of the host body that is the important character of this uh, uh, round worm and then uh, the other characters are uh, the body wall is made up of muscles longitudinal muscles and circular muscles now actually when we take the section of this body it appears as circular means it is a somewhat cylindrical in shape and there are circular muscles and longitudinal muscles in the body wall which helps in the locomotion and uh, here we find mouth and anus but in uh, platyl mentis there was only a common uh, opening there so here there is the mouth and here there is the anus that is the other character of this uh, one then another important character is uh, these are pseudo coelomates that means uh, false coelom coelom is there but it is not lined by mesoderm that is called as false coelom here coelom is completely absent here coelom is present but not a true coelom it is uh, having it lacks or the mesoderm layer is absent in the coelomic cavity that is another character of this ascalmentis the <coughs> mouth and anus are present and the body wall is resistant and uh, again the digestive system is very simple uh, that means uh, there is no need of uh, uh, well developed digestive organs even respiration system is also completely absent because as the animal is parasite uh, it uh, takes in the digested food material so hence uh, there is no need of the well developed digestive system and as it takes uh, directly oxygen so there is no necessary of respiratory system and there is uh, an excretory pore through which the excretion is sent out from the uh, body that is 
the characteristics of this uh, uh, round worms and again the another important structure of this is the body wall uh, there is syncytial epidermis now uh, the body wall is resistant it is having a thick cuticle and also the body wall is made up of longitudinal and uh, circular muscles but uh, the body wall is also having syncytial epidermis now syncytial epidermis means epidermis which is not having cross walls it is made up of cells which are not having cross walls the cytoplasm of one cell and the other cell are continuous and the nuclei are freely distributed so in other words it appears to be multinucleate in condition so that is the called as the syncytial epidermis which is a characteristic feature of the body wall of the this ascalmethis so the body wall is having a thick cuticle it is having syncytial epidermis it is made up of muscles which help in the locomotion and uh, uh, then here there is no presence of sex in the same here it is hermaphrodites but here the sexes are separate and uh, when the sexes are separate but there is a important phenomenon which is called as sexual dimorphism sexual dimorphism means uh, it is a characteristic feature of this uh, group uh, and even we find in some other uh, groups of the animal kingdom sexual dimorphism means now the sexes are separate this is main thing sex uh, the male and female uh, are present in uh, separate uh, uh, individuals but uh, by seeing the morphology by seeing the external features of the animal we can identify whether it is male or female so not even observation of the reproductive system without that the by the appearance of the by the observations of the external features or the morphology there the uh, sex of the ad, uh, animal can be identified it is called as sexual dimorphism now for example uh, taking the example of round worm only which is commonly a parasite in our small intestine here what happens the male suppose this is a male now this male is having a, a small body and having a tail which is curved like this this is the male but if you take the female it is very larger than the female uh, sorry male but uh, it is not having a curved tail so this is female so male and female can be identified uh, just by the appearance so males are usually smaller females are larger in size and uh, not only in size the tail of the male is coiled inwards is curved inwards but the female is not having any curved type of tail that is a characteristic feature of this uh, uh, so uh, the meaning of sexual dimorphism so in this we come across the round worms the filarial worm the hook worm the pin worm and uh, uh, even the whip worms so like that that is a characteristic feature of the phylum ascalmethis now coming to the next phylum annelida so annelida annulus means a ring actually so here uh, example is earthworm the common example so by just uh, uh, remembering the uh, that uh, animal we can come to know that uh, uh, we can remember the characters so by remembering a particular animal which is very familiar so by observation or by uh, remembering that animal we can uh, recall the characters and just uh, of that particular phylum so here uh, phylum annelida so uh, and one more in this uh, uh, they are all bilaterally symmetrical so this is also bilaterally symmetrical this is also bilaterally symmetrical so that means uh, they can be divided into two equal halves in a single plane only and they are made up of three layers so this uh, triploblastic is common throughout uh, all the phylum which we come further so whichever group you study further all they are triploblastic but uh, bilateral symmetrical is restricted only up to particular phylum and uh, that means uh, 
only up to one or two phylum. Then further we come across uh, radial symmetrical animals. Like that there is uh, some changes in that uh, uh, symmetry. But in the annelida and uh, bilateral symmetrical triploblastic is common. And uh, these are found both in uh, land and anim uh, water. So that is they are terrestrial as well as aquatic. Then uh, another important thing is there are segment uh, segmentation present which we have already studied in the starting of this chapter metamerism true segmentation when the segments are present such that uh, the body is uh, external and internally divided it is called as metamerism so in earthworm also you find segments like this so these segments uh, they are not only present on the outer part of the body but they are also present inside so when we cut open the body we can see segmentation also inside and uh, uh, outside also we can see the presence of the segmentation so the such kind of segmentation is called as a true segmentation and it is referred as metamerism so this uh, metamerism is the characteristic feature and uh, here another important character is these are coelomates see a coelomates pseudo coelomates coelomates so the coelom is present it is a true coelom that means uh, mesoderm is present in the cavity of the coelom mesoderm is absent in the cavity of the coelom here coelom is completely absent like that uh, uh, this is uh, coelomates and uh, they are bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic then if you come to the other characters here uh, the in each segments there are structures which are called as parapodia so these parapodia which are present in the body they help in the locomotion so when the earthworm is present or when the animal is present in water it helps in swimming that is the characteristic feature of this parapodia then digestive system is complete there is a well developed mouth and also there is an anus that is another important character and uh, respiration takes place uh, through help of uh, this uh, uh, skin usually and uh, excretion takes place by nephridia so nephridia are uh, excretory organs in each segment the nephridia are present a pair of nephridia are present so these uh, nephridia they open on the surface of the body through pores called as nephridio pores and the waste is sent out through this uh, uh, pores and the, that is the function of nephridia so the nephridia are the excretory organs of the uh, this earthworm and uh, uh, in addition to the parapodia uh, there are also structures which are called as setae parapodia help usually in the uh, movement in water aquatic swimming but when the earthworm or the animal is moving on the solid surface like uh, soil particles like that setae which are f shaped structures they help in the locomotion of the uh, animal so that is the uh, nephridia function then coming to another important is closed circulatory system so this also we have studied in the starting of this chapter open type of circulatory system and closed when the blood is freely present in the body cavity the blood does not flow in well defined uh, ducts or uh, blood vessels so that is open type of vascular system when the blood is transported in well defined ducts or uh, vessels uh, blood vessels it is called as closed circulatory system so in this we find arteries and veins the blood it uh, flows through well defined uh, blood vessels that is the characteristic feature of this uh, 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 say, uh, group that is annelida and another uh, important character of this is as we have seen in the previous phyla since from porifera we never mentioned about the nervous system so that means uh, uh, the nerve cells are there so it does not mean that 
nervous system is absent even in phylum cilentrata and uh, uh, this phylum tenophora and all this there are nerve cells but the nerve cells are not well defined they are freely present and they are uh, conducting simple uh, this uh, means the transmission mechanism but here the nerve cells are well developed and organized into structures which are called as ganglia so ganglion single ganglion means a group of nerve cells which are aggregated and well organized it is called as ganglia but when the nerve cells are freely present we cannot call it as ganglia so the nerve cells they are aggregated they are well organized and they form a, a structure and functioning together they are called as ganglia so ganglia is plural so in the head region or towards the anterior part of the body there is a pair of ganglia called as a cerebral ganglia and from this cerebral ganglia suppose this is a cerebral ganglia pair so the nerve fiber appears so there are many other still ganglia so there is a nerve cord the ganglia are present in each segment like this so this is the nerve cord and the double ventral nerve cord it is called as so the ventral nerve cord is not single but it is double so since from the anterior part of the body we find the double ventral nerve cord and it is completely present in the posterior part of the till the posterior part of the body so that is the, the characteristic features of uh, this uh, uh, phylum so in this we come across uh, earthworm leech and nerys which is also called as clam worm so this uh, clam worm it is present usually in the sand in the beach regions and the leech is actually a parasite uh, which is sucking the blood and <coughs> this leech is also called as hirudinaria so hirudin a chemical is produced by that uh, leech now this leech is common in uh, the forests of our state so when we visit the forests of our state in the malnad area so when we are walking in the forest so these leeches which are small animals uh, they uh, become attached to our uh, feet so when they stick up to our feet uh, so then what they do is they release a chemical called as hirudin that chemical is anesthetic in nature that means when that chemical is released on the skin of that uh, of that part uh, of the foot like that so that becomes uh, loses its uh, sensitiveness so that is called as anesthesia which is used in operations whenever operation is to be done so in that region anesthesia is applied then even by cutting with the help of knife or some uh, scissor like that so there will be no pain that means the impulses are not easily transmitted uh, to the brain we can we do not feel the pain of the from that region similarly here what happens the leech will release that anesthesia and uh, then it will start sucking blood but uh, mosquitoes when it sits and starts uh, sucking the blood we feel the pain because uh, when it uh, uh, sta uh, starts the sucking blood uh, means there uh, the pain is uh, felt or we realize that pain but the pain from the leech we is not felt it will go on sucking uh, sufficient amount of blood maximum amount of blood and uh, uh, we are unaware of that uh, uh, situation and then it will uh, means it will uh, use up that blood from our body that is actually the leech which comes under this phylum uh, annelida so this uh, these are the three uh, phylum then in uh, this we come across herma products in leeches like uh, phylum platelmintis so here unisexual animals but they are sexual dimorphism here there is herma products and uh, the male and female are present in the same animal that is uh, in the phylum uh, annelida now coming to the next uh, phylum of this uh, animal kingdom 
so phylum annelida after that we are having another phylum which is called as phylum arthropoda so phylum arthropoda is another one then phylum mollusca then phylum akinodermata so these are the next three phylum which we come across so arthropoda is actually a the largest phylum of the animal kingdom so there are uh, about a two third of the total animal species in this phylum so out of the total species which are existing so about two third of the species come under so that means uh, most of them are insects all insects come under this phylum arthropoda cockroach the mosquito house fly then the silk moth honey bees so whichever insect you take all insects are coming under phylum arthropoda now this uh, phylum arthropoda includes uh, uh, largest number of uh, uh, species and then it is also bilaterally symmetrical just like the previous phylum so this character continues and it is also triploblastic so triploblastic is common character in all the groups which we study further till wherever the last phylum so there it is very common but bilateral symmetrical is restricted only till here so here again we come across radial symmetry so this is bilateral symmetrical here also the same thing now the other characters coming to this here also the body is segmented but we do not use the word metamerism as we referred in the phylum annelida because the segmentation is not true true segmentation it is not metamerism and uh, here the segments are present only on the body surface but not internally that is another important character of this then the body is uh, covered by a exoskeleton which is called as chitin the surface of the body is having a hard material and it forms the skeleton of the body so as the it is present on the outer part of the body so it is called as exoskeleton endoskeleton means inside the bones which are present in, inside our body it forms the skeleton so it is endoskeleton but uh, in uh, arthropoda the chitinous uh, layer or the chitinous part of the animal acts as a skeleton to that animal so it forms the exoskeleton then uh, their body is segmented but not a true segmented then the body is divided into head thorax and abdomen so body can be differentiated into three regions so for example so this uh, head thorax and abdomen these are the three regions of the Uh, this uh, uh, body then uh, for example if you take a cockroach so the cockroach looks like this we can see the segments here and also the segments here the here this is the head region and <coughs> so these are the wings like this the head thorax abdomen head is having a pair of eyes these are the antennae which are sensitive they are also called as feelers and this thorax is the next part which is having three segments this is the abdomen which is also having segments there are about 10 segments in this but however the number of segments change in the insects but i am taking cockroach as an example here so head thorax and abdomen so the uh, on the lower part of the thorax the thorax has having a, uh, about a, uh, jointed legs for locomotion 
so that is why arthropoda arthro means joint poda means feet sudopodia so poda means feet arthro means joint so jointed feet joint footed animals they are called as commonly so the uh, these appendages which are uh, originating from the thorax region they are having a joint uh, in uh, nature so that is why uh, this uh, are called as arthropoda so the jointed appendages are present for locomotion and also there are two pairs of wings arising from the thorax and the abdomen is also segmented but it is not uh, true segmentation then uh, if you come to the other characters like uh, this uh, respiration circulation and all that so respiration takes place by various uh, uh, organs so in some animals there are gills there are some animals there are uh, book gills there are lungs also book lungs are called as and in some animals there are also trachea so we come across different uh, uh, organs for respiration in some animals there are so that means aquatic uh, arthropods arthropods are found in both land and water there are also animals living in water and there are animal, an, animals living on land so usually the aquatic animals they are having gills and some are having book lungs and uh, some are uh, especially the tra- terrestrial animals they are having trachea for example the cockroach is having trachea trachea is a branched tubular system in which uh, the respiration uh, takes place and thus uh, the respiration occurs by this book lungs and uh, circulatory system is open type but in annelida we have referred as closed type so that means in earthworm the blood flows in well defined blood vessels like uh, arteries or veins but in cockroach the blood is freely present in the cavity of the body so the of course there is a well defined digestive system so here there is the mouth and you will find the digestive system and around this digestive system the blood is there so that means the digestive parts are uh, suspended they are surrounded by the blood and even other organs which are present they are also surrounded by the uh, blood so the blood is uh, of course colorless so cockroach uh, is not having blood which is having rbc but there are other structures which help in the, the transport the blood is uh, colorless and it is uh, present in the uh, body cavity hence it is open type of circulatory uh, system which flows in the uh, body cavity then if you come to the other characters here the excretion takes place by structures which are called as malphigian tubules these are the excretory organs of the phylum arthropoda so in the arthropoda we come across malphigian tubules so in cockroach also we find so when we cut open the body of the cockroach we find some uh, yellowish hair like structures which are freely present and they are uh, uh, visible clearly so these are called as the uh, malphigian tubules and in other animals they are of different types and of different color also so this uh, malphigian tubules they are named after a scientist called as marcello malfigi which is an italian scientist so these malfigian tubules are the characteristic feature of phylum arthropoda and they are excretory in function open circulatory system respiration takes place by trachea gills book lungs and the body is divided into head thorax and abdomen the body is segmented but not a true segmentation the body is covered by an exoskeleton made up of chitin bilateral symmetrical and triploblastic so all these are the characteristics of the phylum arthropoda and then if you come to the examples of this all insects come under this in addition to that uh, we come across the scorpion crab uh, spider uh, then uh, uh, this uh, prawns so prawns uh, uh, which are uh, edible scorpion which is an uh, harmful creature and also this uh, 
spider uh, all these examples plus all insects come under this phylum arthropoda so that is about uh, uh, phylum uh, arthropoda now coming to the next phylum phylum mollusca so phylum mollusca is another phylum which is including about uh, uh, more than 1 lakh species there are about uh, 1 lakh 10000 species in, the, in this group so this is the number of the species present in the phylum mollusca so mollusca means soft actually the body is soft in appearance uh, so it is called as mollusca so here also we come across the body is divided into head and uh, uh, visceral mass and muscular foot so these are the three parts as the head thorax and abdomen here the body is divided into head visceral mass and foot and there is also a structure in the visceral mass called as the mantle now in the phylum mollusca bilateral symmetrical and triploblastic same is applicable and then the body is soft and here we find animals which are living in both land and water here also some are living in land and some are in uh, water and here also we come across the same thing and the uh, body is covered by a shell which is made up of calcium so that is called as a calcareous shell so the calcareous shell is uh, uh, covered and uh, the body is not having any segments like this so the body is unsegmented and it is covered by calcareous uh, shell and uh, here in between the uh, visceral mass and the mantle uh, there is a cavity so the visceral mass or which is also called as a, the visceral hump it is also referred as so that visceral hump and the mantle which is a region present inside there is a cavity which is called as the mantle uh, cavity so that is a characteristic feature of this and uh, again here the respiration takes place by structures called as gills so these gills are somewhat feather like and these feather like gills help in the respiratory function and uh, that helps in the uh, respiratory function and this head is having some tentacles some elongated so we might have seen the snail which comes under this uh, mollusca so the snail when it is moving it is having a calcareous shell on the upper side and in the front the head when it is moving it is having a, a pair of elongated structures so those are called as the tentacles so you might have seen these tentacles will be stretched and they will be contracted so they are, they are somewhat sensory in function so the tentacles are sensory just like how we sense the smell by our nose in the same way it is having uh, that uh, structure and another important thing in this uh, head is uh, there is a structure called as radula which is a tongue like structure means whenever it uh, feeds on anything it will uh, take withdraw that material eatable with the help of that organ called as radula so radula is called is actually a rasping organ so rasping organ means uh, it will grab that and it will swallow that with the help of this uh, uh, radula then uh, these are having a separate sexes means they are uh, uh, here instead of using the word uh, separate sex dioecious also is word is used so dioecious means male and females are separate and uh, uh, these uh, dioecious animals they are egg laying animals so they are called as oviparous animals so they lay eggs and uh, the eggs further develop into the young ones so these are the characteristics of the phylum uh, mollusca then the examples of this are uh, we come across all the snails uh, types of different snails under this in addition to that uh, there are some uh, other animals like cuttlefish 
which is called as sepia. It is not actually a fish, yet, but the word is referred like that. Uh, cuttlefish and even the pearl oyster. So the pearls which are found in the sea, they are from that animal, pearl oyster. And then the octopus, which is commonly called as the devil fish, that is also coming under. So one uh, thing is the uh, shell when we say in some animals it is not well developed. For example in octopus the shell is not hard as that in the found in the snail. So sometimes uh, the shell is uh, much reduced and it is not uh, having much amount of calcium. So that is uh, the examples of this phylum uh, mollusca. Then Coming to the next phylum, phylum Achinodermata. <coughs> so phylum Achinodermata. Achino means uh, spines. Derma means the skin actually. So the skin is the spiny, in the, that is the word. And uh, the important characteristic of this is, these are exclusively marine animals. So there are two phyla in the animal kingdom which are exclusively marine. So in the previous uh, phylum Tenophora, that means uh, Cilentrata, Porifera Cilentrata, Tenophora. Tenophora is also a group which is exclusively marine. And the next, this is the other phylum which is exclusively marine. That means when we want to see a living animal of this group, we have to uh, visit the sea only. But however, we can see the examples in our area also, but they are stored, they are preserved animals. But live, when we want to see them, that means we have to observe them only in the sea. That means they are exclusively marine animals. That is one important character. Then here is they are radially symmetrical. So they have now the change. So bilateral symmetrical, bilateral symmetrical, radially symmetrical. So the here there is some change in this. Now the adults are radially symmetrical. But when the animal is reproducing during reproduction, when the young ones are produced, for example the larva, these are bilaterally symmetrical. See the larva which are produced by the eggs, fertilized eggs. So these larvae are bilaterally symmetrical, but when the larvae develop into young ones, they become bilaterally, uh, so uh, radially symmetrical. So the bilaterally changes into the radially uh, symmetrical ones. So that is about the uh, characteristic uh, uh, features of this. Then another important thing is uh, these are uh, coelomates. So all these are almost uh, coelomates. That means uh, they are having a true coelom. Then the skeleton when we come to the uh, that character. So here the skeleton is made up of uh, structures which are called as ossicles. As the calcareous shell is there, so the endoskeleton is made up of uh, structures which are called as ossicles. They are also made up of calcium. Then uh, other characters are another important structure in this is there is a special type of uh, system in this body called as water vascular system. Now this water vascular system is a characteristic feature of this phylum. So, uh, water transport system, canal system, that is phylum porifera. So that is why we should not get confused. This is water vascular system, that is water transport or uh, canal system it is called as. Now this water vascular system is somewhat different from the that group. So this uh, helps in respiration and it helps in uh, the food capture uh, and also it helps in the locomotion of the uh, animal. So water vascular system helps in uh, transportation of the food. It helps in respiration. It helps in the locomotion of the body. It helps in capturing the food material. So that is uh, the function of this 
water vascular system and uh, here the excretory system is absent uh, that means there is no well defined excretory system and it is uh, sent out uh, directly through the uh, excretory uh, pores of the uh, animal and here the sexes are separate like this uh, dioecious so here also the sexes are separate actually here also dioecious they are separate here also the sexes are separate and uh, uh, the fertilization uh, takes place uh, internally or sorry externally that is the characteristic features of this uh, phylum uh, Achinodermata. So the ossicles exclusively marine, adult radially symmetrical, larvae bilaterally symmetrical, water vascular system which is helpful in the locomotion, food capture, transport of the food and also the, uh, the respiration is also conducted by this uh, system that is one then the, uh, they are also dioecious then the fertilization is external that means the fusion of the male and female gametes takes place outside now under this we come across starfish brittle star and uh, sea uh, urchins uh, sea cucumber all these animals are coming under phylum uh, achinodermata so the, that is about uh, this uh, uh, phylum achinodermata now coming to the next uh, phylum after the phylum Achinodermata, so that is phylum Hemichordata. So, which is a small phylum. So, phylum Hemichordata, it is a small phylum where we So these are uh, phylum Hemichordata includes animals which are worm like marine animals they are also found in uh, sea water and then they are uh, bilaterally symmetrical just like uh, the phylum Arthropoda mollusca but phylum Achinodermata is radially symmetrical adults are radially but uh, the larvae are bilateral. So these are also bilateral symmetrical and uh, definitely they are triploblastic and they are um, having a true coelom. Then uh, uh, circulatory system is open type. So almost all uh, uh, groups which we come further they are having open type of circle, uh, sorry closed type but here we find open type of circulatory system just like phylum arthropoda. That is the blood is present in uh, body cavities and then the respiration takes place by gills but as the uh, animals are living under in wa inside water so that is uh, they are having uh, gills as the respiratory organs and uh, the body is divided into three regions here so here proboscis collar and tail uh, these are the three parts as we studied in the arthropoda head, thorax and abdomen, here also there is a small head like region called as the proboscis which is somewhat uh, uh, elongated and uh, pointed like, uh, not exactly uh, and there is a ring like structure just in the back of this part uh, uh, somewhat uh, uh, longer like and the tail region. So the body is divided into proboscis then uh, uh, this uh, proboscis uh, collar and uh, uh, tail or also it is called as a trunk that uh, body part is referred as the remaining part of the body after the collar is referred as the trunk and it is somewhat elongated appears like a tail then uh, respiration by gills and then excretion takes place by a gland which is called as proboscis gland the proboscis gland helps in the excretion of the animals. Then uh, here also same as Achinodermata the sexes are separate, dioecious. So almost uh, in the further groups uh, the animals are dioecious. So dioecious is an evolved character means uh, it is a not a primitive character hence all animals which are uh, of the higher groups further they are dioecious that means the sexes are separate. So usually when sexes are separate the fertilization will be external that is 
the characteristic feature of this uh, group uh, called as phylum hemichordata. So balanoglossus is one example under this uh, uh, phylum. So that balanoglossus is an animal and another one is uh, sacoglossus. Balanoglossus and sacoglossus are the some two examples coming under this uh, uh, phylum hemichordata. So that is one uh, hemichordata group and then uh, if you come to the next phylum, phylum chordata. So phylum chordata <coughs> it is a developed group. So this phylum chordata uh, or in other words chordates they are having uh, three important characters. Now presence of uh, notochord is an important character. So we have studied what is a notochord. Notochord is a rod like structure developed in the embryonic development of an animal by the mesoderm layer. So the mesoderm which is present it gives rise to a rod like structure at the time of embryo development that is called as notochord. So the notochord uh, further develops into the vertebral column actually. So when for take for a, the example of human being, when the human being is under embryo development means uh, when the child is under pregnancy period. So there what happens actually the notochord which is present uh, it is further developing and it becomes the vertebral column that is the backbone of our body. And that means we cannot see notochord in our body now. We had a notochord when we were under the embryonic stage during embryonic development uh, that notochord is seen uh, in this uh, phylum chordata. But this word notochord has not been seen in the previous phyla because there though there is mesoderm they are triploblastic they are having ectoderm, mesoderm, endoderm but the mesoderm does not give rise to the notochord but here the notochord is present that is the important character and the presence of uh, pharyngeal gill slits is another character of this uh, group uh, that is phylum uh, uh, chordata and also in addition to this there is a nerve cord which is uh, uh, dorsal and somewhat hollow and this nerve cord will become the spinal cord in future as the notochord becomes the vertebral column the backbone the nerve cord becomes the spinal cord that is also another characteristic feature of the phylum chordata and uh, pharyngeal gill slits is another uh, character of this uh, group and the bilateral symmetrical triploblastic are common and there is closed circulatory system so all these further groups are having closed circulatory uh, system that is another uh, character of this, of this uh, uh, phylum chordata. Now this phylum chordata is divided into three sub phylum, sub phyla. So there are three sub phylum under this means whenever the phylum is very large it is again divided into sub phylum. So in this one sub phylum is urochordata is one sub phylum. So urochordata, then uh, cephalochordata, these, this is another subphylum and uh, vertebrata. So these are the three subphylum which are coming under this chordata. Now this uh, subphylum urochordata, what uh, is this we shall see. Now this uh, urochordata, sub, uh, cephalochordata, vertebrata, these are divided on the basis of the notochord. How the notochord exists in the animals. Now this uh, in the phylum, in the subphylum urochordata, the notochord is restricted only to the tail region. So the, it is present only in the tail, that means this notochord. These three groups are divided on the basis of the nature of the notochord. If it is present only in the tail, restricted to the tail region, it is called as uh, this uh, uh, urochordata. 
and this examples are uh, this uh, acidia dolilium are the examples of this uh, uh, group now when the it is when the urochordata is present from head till tail means from the head region till the tail region the notochord is present existing at remains and it remains throughout life but in urochordata it is a short lived only and it is present only in the uh, tail region and that is why it is uh, urochordata cephalo actually uh, uro means tail it is a greek word cephalo means also tail uh, sorry cephalo means head so from head to tail the notochord is present so in this uh, branchiostoma is the example of that uh, group so this is on the this uh, single character these groups are divided urochordata means uh, other characters are common to the chordata but the notochord is restricted to the tail only it is present only in the tail region notochord present from the head till tail and it remains throughout life and uh, in case of this it is present from head till tail of course but the notochord is converted into uh, what is called as a backbone here it is not converted into backbone that is why vertebrates so generally we uh, call uh, refer animals as invertebrates and vertebrates isn't it so vertebrates means they are having a vertebral column backbone and uh, invertebrates means uh, no vertebral column so like that sub phylum vertebrata uh, it is the notochord during which the uh, of course the notochord is present in embryonic region so we are also uh, having notochord when we were in the embryo so that notochord will be converting into the backbone or the vertebral column and uh, that is the characteristic features of this uh, phylum uh, sub phylum vertebrata now in this uh, sub phylum vertebrata we come across uh, different uh, groups or each sub phylum is again div uh, div uh, divided into what are called as the classes so there are uh, different classes under this so here uh, actually there are about seven classes class cyclostoma class chondrichthyes class osteichthyes class amphibia class reptilia class aves class mammalia so fish amphibians reptiles birds and mammals but fishes are divided into three groups again there are three classes under uh, this fish for example <coughs> cyclostoma is one group chondrichthyes is another group osteichthyes is another group so these are the uh, three groups so cyclostoma uh, chondrichthyes osteichthyes all these three are the fish groups now in the cyclostoma what happens so cyclostoma is also group of fish so this uh, fish includes very less number only about uh, 43 species are there in this group and in the case of uh, chondrichthyes there are about uh, 1200 species and in case of osteichthyes there are about uh, 3200 species of fish this is the number which we can mention so these are uh, fishes without uh, jaws so jaws are absent so that is why they are commonly called as jawless fishes they are having jawless fishes they don't have jaws so when we see the body of this fish so this uh, uh, fish is not having any jaw instead it is having a circular opening like this of course there are gills inside for respiration jaws are absent uh, and even fins are absent so fins means uh, the one which are uh, having uh, helps in locomotion so these are the fins so these uh, fins are absent in the jawless fishes that is uh, cyclostoma and in addition to that uh, 
inside the this uh, circular mouth there are teeth which can be extended outside and which can be drawn inside they are called as a retractable teeth so presence of the retractable teeth is the important characteristics of the this uh, group uh, cyclostoma and uh, there are no scales in this no fins so on the surface of the body you find scales here like this on the surface of the fish body but the scales are absent in this so respiration is there and uh, uh, here the skeleton is made up of cartilage so the uh, and this is also made up of cartilage so this is same character here the these are the bony fishes skeleton is made up of bone here there is no bone but there is cartilage uh, skeleton hence they are called as the cartilage fishes and uh, these are usually marine and whenever they want to lay eggs at the time of fertilization they go to the fresh water they release the uh, sperms and the eggs which is called as a spawning and uh, they uh, go to that and the uh, reproduction takes place in that region so in this uh, uh, this uh, hampery fish and uh, another one is uh, petromyzon hag fish so petromyzon and hag fish are the characteristic features of this uh, uh, group cyclostoma so cyclostoma means they are not having jaws no scales no fins body is made up of cartilage and uh, they are uh, uh, having uh, this uh, uh, marine type of uh, uh, habitat and then the uh, circulatory system is closed so almost all uh, are having closed type of circulatory system now if you come to the chondrichthyes and osteichthyes see so here the mouth is present in the ventral region like this so these are the two jaws and here you will find the fins and these are the scales so these scales are called as placoid scales and in the case of uh, just if you come to the difference between these two so this is the another bony fish the mouth is terminal like this see the mouth is ventral so the mouth is ventral in the case of this the mouth is terminal in the case of bony fish so when we see a fish just by observing the position of the mouth you can find it whether it is ventral or whether it is terminal so that is uh, how the uh, differences which we can find out here the scales are of placard type here also there are scales but these scales are called as tenoid scales or cycloid scales they are called as so though they appear same but the nature of the scales is different so scales are present here but scales are absent here so placoid scales tenoid scales ventral mouth ventral means below this is a dorsal this is ventral and here mouth is a terminal and here the gills which are present they are covered by a structure which is called as operculum but here the gills are not covered by operculum that is another difference so though we cannot uh, uh, if we closely observe, observe that we can come to this see that but this is very clear character for cartilage fish and bony fish another important character is when we see the tail of the fish now this tail is unequal like this but when we see the tail of the tail fin of the bony fish it is equal like this so that is also the tail fin this is called as these are the uh, pelvic fins pectoral fins or the dorsal fins ventral fins the tail fin so this tail fin is unequal hence it is called as heterocircle this is called as homocircle homocircle means they are equal that is the important character of this uh, <coughs> bony fish and the uh, cartilage fish so other characteristics in the bony fish there is a structure called as air bladder which is actually inside the body so just by uh, seeing the fish you cannot identify the air bladder so that is why air bladder is completely absent in cartilage fish and it is completely present in uh, bony fish so these are some uh, 
uh, important characters between these uh, two uh, groups. Uh, both uh, here, uh, again when we come to the other characters, these are mostly uh, YV pairs or VV pairs. These are OV pairs. So cartilage fishes are giving birth to young ones. But uh, bony fishes, they lay eggs where the eggs later gives rise to the uh, young ones. So under cartilage fish, the shark is the best example. So the shark when we observe, usually when you see the picture or a, a shark in the movies or like that, so you can observe that uh, the mouth is ventral and uh, the tail is unequal there. And uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, by seeing you cannot identify placard and tenoid so easily. When we closely observe their structure, nature of the scale, that we come to know. And uh, here there is no operculum, uh, inside there is no air bladder. But here mouth terminal, operculum is present, air bladder, tenoid scales and uh, unequal, uh, sorry, equal uh, tail fin or homocircle uh, tail fin is the other characteristics uh, of this uh, uh, group. So the remaining characters are uh, same. Now this uh, air bladder helps in the floating of the uh, buoyancy. As the uh, bo body is having bones, uh, so to uh, reduce the weight so that uh, air bladder will help and that is uh, the characteristics. So this uh, uh, cartilage fish, uh, shark is the example for this. And other examples, uh, there are electric ray fish or what are called as the sting rays. So the sting rays or the electric ray fish, they come under this cartilage fish. In this we come ac across the seahorse and the flying fish uh, which is the common example of this uh, uh, bony fish. So the cat fishes and uh, the uh, this uh, catla which is called as, so that is also another characteristic feature of this uh, uh, group. So these are the three classes and uh, uh, the next three classes or the four classes are there so that uh, we shall take in the next class.